we want to study the complexity of finding out whether a given planar digraph is an upward planar graph. There are a bunch of results for this in the literature. In 1995, Garkin Tamasia showed that for a planar acyclic digraph, it's in general MP hard to decide whether it's upward planar. On the other hand, Bertolassi et al. showed 94 that if we also have a combinatorial embedding, then we can test it in order of n squared times. Since every three connected planar graph has a unique combinatorial embedding, that means that for tri-connected planar digraphs we can also test an order of n squared time. If we also have just a single source, then we can even do it in linear time, which has been proven by Hutton and Lebo 1996. Today we want to focus on this result here by Bertolassi et al. So the question we want to ask is, if we have a plane digraph, so a digraph with a planar embedding, and the set of faces f and the outer face f0, how can we test whether it is upward planar with regards to this embedding? And the idea for that algorithm is a very simple one. We first want to find a property that any upward planar drawing of the graph satisfies. Then we want to formalize the property and then we want to find an algorithm to test the property. Let's start with the first part. For that we need some more definitions. We already know what a global source or a global sink is, that are the vertices that only have outgoing or only incoming edges. But there are also so-called local sources with regards to a face. So if I look at a single face, and a vertex only has outgoing edges inside this face, then it's a local source for that face. So for example, this one here is a local source because it only has these two outgoing edges. But also in this face here, this is a local source because we only have outgoing edges on this face, although this is not a global source. It's also a local source for this one then here we have these two local sources, and on the outer face here we have this local source. The same way we can also define local sinks with regards to faces. So here on this face we have these two local sinks, here we have this one, here we have this, here this, and here this. Now you see that I have already drawn some angles in here. Now we will see that I already drew some angles here. For every local source and every local sink, we want to have a look at how large this angle is. And we say that it's small if it's at most pi or at most 180 degrees, and it's large if it's more than that. And now you will see that here I skipped out a few of local sources and sinks. For example, here, this vertex is also a local sink for the outer face. So on the outer face, of course, it also only has outgoing edges. But here it has a large angle. This vertex is also a local source for here, but it has a large angle. This vertex is a local sink here with a large angle. And these are local sinks on the outer face with large angles. Now you will see that all these vertices that have large angles are actually the global sources and global sinks. We now want to count for every vertex how many large angles do we have. In the same way we want to count for the faces how many large angles they have. And the same we want to do for the number of small angles. Further, we want to count for a face how many local sources does it have. And the number of local sources is actually the same as the number of total of local sinks. If you look at this face, for example, here, let's say we start at some point, we move down, and whenever we start moving upwards, we have a local source. When we start moving downwards again, we have a local sink. And clearly, whenever we walk around the boundary cycle of this phase, whenever we change the direction to go up, at some point we have to change it to go down again. So for every local source, we must have a local sink. 
And now each of these local sources or sinks has either a small or a large angle in the space. So the number of large angles plus the number of small angles is exactly the number of sources plus the number of sinks, or 2 times A of F. And the main question we want to ask ourselves is now, if we have an embedding, we know where the global sources are, we know where the local sources are, but we don't know yet which of these angles become small and which of these angles become large. So we have to consider the so-called assignment problem. If we have a global source, at which phase does it have a large angle? And the same for the global sinks. So every global source and every global sink has to be assigned to some phase where it has its large angle. And how to do that? We want to have a look at in the next parts.